Over the span of 2021, Minecraft has seen a lot of presence. This all started with the famous YouTuber Dream getting trapped on his own server. This encouraged many players around the world to build their own prison. Everyone gave it a try, and competition made things go at an incredible pace. This fascinating subject allowed for many discoveries. Each new prison claimed to be better than the last. Let me take you on a journey for the perfect prison. As I said, this all started on the Dream SMP, a Minecraft roleplay server where the owner is imprisoned in Pandora's Vault. Pandora's Vault is a prison made by Awesome Dude and Dream himself, who, without knowing it, laid the foundations for every next prison. It features a cell surrounded by lava, thousands of obsidian blocks, tons of cold checks, elbow gardens, and much more. At first, it seemed inescapable, but after less than two days, the first escape plan was released. Seeing just how fast a prison which required 3 months of work has been thwarted, we began to ask ourselves, does the perfect prison even exist? To answer this question, we first need to define what a perfect prison is. Some might say that it has to be open to visitors and not hurt the prisoner. In short, the prisoner's physical and mental health have to be respected. Others might say that only security matters. I'm okay with both, but from a solely technical point of view, all we want is for the prisoner to be locked in forever. So a perfect prison is an inescapable one. But what makes a prison escapable? To help us understand, I've listed every fundamental point a perfect prison has to follow. You shouldn't be able to eat yourself and respawn outside, get help from another player, use an enderpearl stasis chamber, smuggle items in, or break any blocks. Has anyone done the perfect prison? Or will anyone build it? Let's take a look at history, shall we? The first notable person to take on this challenge was Teen Sven. After watching a video on how to escape Pandora's vault, he thought to himself, I bet I can do better. And that's just what he did. He spent two weeks building Poseidon's vault and uploaded a video about it expecting to get between 5 to 100 views. That's where he was wrong. But what made it better than Pandora's vault? The main factor was the cell. Did he use obsidian? Maybe bedrock? No, he decided to go with cobblestone. Now you might call it dumb until you realize that after 4 hours of punching, the block is back. This is done using the Skyball player's favorite contraption, the cobblestone generator. When a gap appears, it gets filled. A cell with unbreakable walls. Surely, no one will escape out of that. Mithridak, an escaping master, declared war on the 16th of March 2021. He showed to the world why this prison was bad and how he could escape it. Sin Sven instantly got to work, but he wasn't alone this time. He had the help of a player named Obama Man and a redstone genius called the Death Creeper. Together, they would make a truly inescapable prison, Hades Vault. Every flaw that was abused to escape Poseidon's vault was fixed. But this time, the community was prepared, and less than a day after its release, it was escaped. Even I made a little video about it. But the true GOAT is still Mithridak, who escaped it by himself with no outside help. Good thing he's trained for this, because the next two prisons will simply exile the prisoner. Titan's vault was made by Mining Blob. It's pretty much the same as Hades Vault, but with no way to bring in items from the outside. But the true upgrade was a multitude of what we call chunk bags. 
Minecraft Chunk is a 16x16 area, going all the way from bedrock to build limits. If you overload it with data, it'll kick any player getting near it. And don't even think about going above or under it. This thing has no height, nor depth limit. It is simply impossible to traverse. But that didn't stop Mithridak. As I said, he can't bring items in, but this legend took all he needed directly from the prison and escaped with only a barrel and a sign. Now onto Jensen's design. He went for something very cruel, yet optimal. And as much as I hate it, no real flaws have been found about his concept. In Minecraft, there is a set number of end portals, 128 to be precise. Since it's the only way to enter the end dimension, Mojang made sure it was unbreakable. This was without counting on the player's obsession with achieving the impossible. Mushrooms, they're tiny and insignificant. But if you grow one, it becomes big and most importantly solid. If there were any transparent blocks in its way, such as, I don't know, a portal to another dimension, it will replace it. And that's all Jensen needed. For his present, he would go out and break every end portal but one far away. Then, he'd make the prisoner enter the dimension and break the last entry to this other world, doing its name justice. The end. So, is this a perfect prison? Actually, no. Jensen's design has one flaw, and it's the absence of a real prison for his concept. Everything is very theoretical, at least for now. Also, and even though it is okay according to our definition, isn't banning the end making you worse than the prisoner? We've gotten over 5 prisons. If you think that was a lot, let me tell you, that we've barely scratched the surface. History hasn't given us a perfect prison yet, so why not make one ourselves? Remember this fundamental list in the beginning? We're gonna use it. Our new goal is to cross off everything. Put on your lab coat, we're going to experiment. Let's first address the killing yourself tactic. If this one works, it's only because people manage to bring in items. So if we take care of that, we can kill two birds with one stone. To make sure the suspect doesn't have items, we usually kill check them. This idea works wonderfully, but as if everyone wanted their prison to be escapable, they never do it right before the prisoner enters the cell. The way you enter is usually with a bed. Because of the way they work, they can respawn you in a box. So the best way to make a prison item proof simply to, instead of letting the prisoner sleep in the bed, you make them die after setting the spawn point. The way you can do this is by trapping a monster near the bed. Usually, we hate to see this message, but not this time. Whether it's night or day, the prisoner can't sleep. However, they can set their spawn point and get killed to enter the cell. We did it! Item smuggling and suicide escapes are officially impossible. Well, fixing these issues seems pretty easy. What's next? Here we are, the reason why I'm even making this video in the first place. The unfixable issue. A concept so unstable and unpredictable that nobody can comprehend it. Let me introduce you to the power of friendship. You as a guard can control the prisoner. However, you cannot control their contacts. It may have been easy to make it inescapable alone, Making it break in proof looks impossible. So far, we haven't had to bother with strategies regarding items, because we can easily clear the prisoner's inventory. But a saver from the outside can have every single item in the game. This prison war has lasted a pretty long time, and I don't know about you guys, but I'm tired of waiting. As we know, a random player who wants to save the prisoner has a lot of ways to do it. Weathers, bedrock breaking techniques, infiltration, and more. These methods are good, but depend on an element as unstable as the prisoner's friend. Guards. To make things simple, we're gonna say that if you get caught by a guard, the plan isn't valid. This means stealth is key, and from my experience, I know exactly what to do. We're gonna use ender pearls to their full potential. To make the player land on blocks instead of getting buried when an ender pearl reaches the ground, Mojang made it so they teleport your feet at the coordinates it hits. Also, they're thrown from the player's head. Do you see where this is going? I throw a pearl. My feet go up to my head, which also went up by a block. Repeat this process and you can go up solid walls and roofs. 
In my last video, I saved my imaginary friend from Hades Vault using this exact mechanic. If we somehow find a way to make an unprovable pattern, friend's help can be crossed off our list. First of all, pruning through roof relies on three factors. The hitbox, the block faced, and the falling speed. When it comes to the hitbox, you basically have to be standing at all times. If you happen to crawl, you're stuck. The block you're facing has to have a surface to stand on. And finally, the falling speed. This is a bit of a tricky one. It only applies if there is no surface to land on. When you pearl up, there is a fraction of a second when you can see the next layer. Depending on how fast you're falling, you can throw another pearl to reach the next floor. The way we're going to experiment is by trying our best not only to build the perfect prison, but also to make a perfect escape plan. My small brain alone won't cut it, so I'm gonna have to get some help from far and wide, expect to see some unknown faces, and maybe some familiar ones. On a quest for knowledge, I joined Jensen's Discord server and contacted the man himself. I told him I could pearl through any roof, and he immediately proved me wrong. What if the prison was built at the bottom of the world, just on top of bedrock? Usually, bedrock is not very hard to pearl through, People do it a lot to go on the nether through, but this time, I couldn't place any block under here. I needed to break bedrock to go under the prison, but once here, I was stuck. I tried using elytras to pearl up, but it didn't work because I wasn't in my standing animation. And then I remembered this trick. You can place your shulker in the void. The way you do it is by exploding an upside down shulker while falling. I was planning on pearling from here when it suddenly hit me. No, I mean literally hit me. The shulker shot his thing, and I started levitating. This was my chance, my falling speed was reversed, which meant I didn't need a surface to land on. This was perfect. My head hit the bedrock, I pearled up, and it worked. I was very proud of myself, but it was far from done. A few hours later, he gave me this new challenge. In this design, binaries made it impossible to place blocks, and the roof was too high for my pearls to reach. It took me 4 hours of learning and mostly trying random stuff, but I found a way, and I named it La Spiderman. If you crouch and walk forward while purling onto a wall, you'll get stuck in it, allowing you to climb it like a spider. He then gave me more patterns, but I managed to go through all of them. Here is a montage of some of his ideas. Because the banners gave me so much trouble, he came back to try and beat La Spiderman, trapping me in a pyramid. I couldn't find a solution. I needed help. Fortunately, around the same time, a random guy named Blabber Splash joined Jensen's server, and his education was outstanding. I would no longer work alone, would be a team, and according to Jensen, the problem makers. Together, we went on a server and started trying to go up this pyramid. And their pearls and block were useless for this one. We had nowhere to teleport to, and no space to build. Our only solution was entities, and as it turns out, one of them can be piled. Stacking up boats by placing them on the side of banners made us reach the top. It sure was tedious, but it worked. Once here, we just had to enter the last boat and use our green gems once again. Next, the blue dream had the useless idea of detecting the player. Why is this? Because the prisoner's accomplice doesn't care about getting detected once. They can have such OP gear that you can't kill them, and need so little time to break the string to open the way for their next attempt that it doesn't matter. The Burn Slash and I have been working for days on an unprovable pattern. Went from one ID to another, and couldn't find anything. Until we decided to get some inspiration from the best. For the latest version of Hades Vault, the Death Creeper made a defense that seemed impossible to pearl through to anyone, the Swiss cheese. But Labby is not just anyone, and he made a discovery that changed our entire point of view. What we needed 
was to be facing a block at all times. But the strikeboard pattern made it so whichever block you were in, you'd end up facing air, forcing you to crawl. And then, Labby got it. Instead of facing one block, we'll face four at the same time, and then pearl up like it was nothing. It worked. I was super happy. But he wasn't. The perfect prison seemed to be moving away from us. So we got back to work. What we needed now was to make the player face air at any point. We couldn't use more than one block wide air pockets, because it would allow for his companion to place a boat and bypass the whole thing. Then we thought about stairs, arranged to have the line between four blocks full of air. There was one problem though, you can waterlock them, changing your falling speed and allowing you to pass it. The perfect block for the situation had to not have a headbox in its four corners, to not possibly be waterlogged, and to not let space for any blocks or boats to be placed. Iron bars, glass panes, fence gates and walls, they could all be waterlogged. The burn slash was giving up. I was dancing. Until... until I placed a piston block. When extended, they were actually perfect. No space for a boat, nor any blocks. If you try to pearl through, you'll get stuck. These blocks are revolutionary. Couple these bad boys with the Death Creeper Swiss cheese, and you get the Belgian lasagna. This is it, the impearlable pattern. After this discovery, we instantly contacted Scene's van and told him about it. He told us the pattern was good, and we were full of joy. All work paid off. We can finally cross off the help from the outside point. We made the perfect prison. Except we didn't. We were focusing on this thing so much that we forgot the name of the game we were playing. Minecraft. Anyone can just mine the banners. In the worst case scenario, with the pattern going from bedrock to the height limit, and with perfectly timed elder guardians, it would only take 10 and a half minutes to get rid of them. Correction, it wouldn't take any time at all. If you drank milk and chopped them with an efficiency 5 golden axe before the guardians give you the effect back, the destruction will be instant. It seems as if we didn't target the real issue. If people could traverse from the ground, let's make the ground itself inaccessible. Mining Blob, the builder of Titan's Vault, knew that the real problem was other players being able to approach your cell. And since one chunk band was reversible, he made Tartarus, a prism with four chunk bands to go through until you're in the prism. Chunk bands are considered by some as unfair, which makes sense. You're basically banning the player, but it's also a vanilla feature that appears to be very useful in our context. So is Tartarus a perfect prism? No, it's actually possible to break into it. But I'll tell you more about this later. Next, the Blue Dream had the useless ID of detecting the player. I was so wrong. While we were searching for the unparalleled pattern, Jensen was busy working on what he will call Reception Vault. When you compare this observer cube to other prisons, it might look miserable, but it's actually excellent. What he wanted was to open his latest work to visitors. So one end portal will be kept, but don't get ahead of yourself. Unless you go through the visiting process, you're not entering the cell. Why? Because if you break a block or step on a string, the only way in will get destroyed by a mushroom. This observer mess then got upgraded into Arabus Abyss, Jensen's first proper prison. Sinsvan was also back with, according to him, the perfect prison. Gaius Vault. This prison will later become a reference in the prison war, and who does better wins it all. Two people claim to have made a better prison than him. Mining Blob, with the Pyramid, and a new challenger named JJK03, also known as Ray. They both had one thing in common. They used a block named Block 36. It is unmovable, prevents any block placing, but can be blown up and interacted through. If you want to learn more about this mysterious block, the Curse Judge made a great video on the subject. There we go! We now have four contenders for the title of best Maybe even perfect Minecraft present. Jensen with the Arabus Abyss, Teensven with Gaius Vault, Mining Blob with the Pyramid, and finally JJK03 with the Kingstone. We want to get a winner, but before the victory comes a fight. And who better to talk about these prisons than the Bellard themselves?
I got those four builders to defend their work and tell us why their prison is the best of the best. My prison is the best because it has the ability to adapt and it actually tackled the challenge of building a prison in the overworld, which makes it vulnerable to outside attacks and other things. But we actually managed to get that under control. And since we're constantly updating the prison, we can actually adapt it to whoever's escaping it and fix the method they used. So once enough people escape, we will make it more and more inescapable and sooner or later, it will be completely inescapable. Hey, so my prison, which is every bus abyss, I definitely don't think it's the best in terms of dedication and designs. You would probably say it's small and lack a lot of security features other prisons offer. Which is true, but it doesn't need them. Perception box if built perfectly, which is something even I felt that it alone is 100% break in proof. All the outer layers of the prison is just for visiting. I know there's gonna be a lot of people criticizing me for using the end or literally stopping people from going to the end just to imprison someone. But is it really that extreme when compared to Chang Bans or Update Suppressors that literally crashes both the games and the server? But yeah, if you don't like it, just link the perception box to activate something else like an Update Suppressor. But of course, it does make some flaws come back, like unloaded stasis chambers. So if you still want 100% break-in proof without any escape methods at all, the end is required. At least still maybe some genius finds a different way. Other than that, I was also asked to say why my prison is better than the other prisons. So uh, because all the other prisons sucks. Okay, I'm joking. But seriously, I don't know who else is in this video yet, but probably all those prisons are much bigger and requires much more efforts just to be another version of a normal prison. The Pyramid, the most inescapable prison in the internet currently. It uses 64 outer chunk bands and 2 inner lockdown chunk bands. The Pyramid is also a redstone computer. It is surrounded by soul sand elevators, which are weatherproof. And the soul sand elevators are also chunk banned, so there's no way of getting in. There's sectors everywhere and the redstone tells the guard where exactly the sector the error is at. When a lockdown is triggered, the guard stasis will trigger and teleport them out of the chunk ban, while the intruder instantly gets chunk banned. The Kingstone. It's not the best prison. Ares is. In fact, it has never been escaped from the inside legitimately. <coughs> Mr. Luck. After this little fight, we can get an idea of the ranking. Mine goes a little like this. Mining Blob on top with the Pyramid, followed by Steen Sven and Jensen tied for second place, and in last, I would put JJKO3. This is my opinion and definitely not final, since we still have a lot to discuss. These presents are very impressive. But they're not quite perfect. There's still a way to escape most of them, and I'm gonna go over that. As a disclaimer, some of these plans require a ridiculous amount of work, but so do these vaults. Also, the ideas I'm showing were original at the time of writing this. Let's first talk about the pyramid. At the time of editing this, this prison hasn't been escaped yet, which bothers me a little, because I had already chosen the winner of this prison war before the pyramid got released. So, because I want to prove a point, and since I know so much about prisons now, here's my attempt at saving the prisoner from the pyramid. First of all, you're gonna have to dig into the east wall of the pyramid. Lock yourself up and build a tiny TNT cannon to blow up the chunk pan machine right in front of you. Once the shulker boxes have despawned, build a nether portal and bring a shulker from the end. Then set up this ender pearl cannon that will allow you to bypass every chunk band. It consists of a pearl alignment contraption and 40 TNT minecarts. Activate it and make sure to get levitation before your pearl lands. When you get teleported, spam your pearls until you reach air. At this point, you won't have any mining fatigue yet. So dig to these exact coordinates and place a boat in between those four blocks to allow yourself to pearl up until you reach a respawn area. Once here, break the boat, place a block in the corner and pearl up again to reach your cell and explode yourself and the prisoner. Since you obstructed their respawn area, they will be free. On a more serious note, the pyramid is escapable. And so is Gaia's vault, as Front and Jensen have proven it. Or is it? Well, it was. But Gaia's vault has an ability that others don't have. It evolves. 
The builders are constantly improving it and fixing every flaw as soon as they find one, making it the potential winner of this competition. Another potential winner is Erebus Abyss. If everything is going according to plan, that is. Take everyone out of the end dimension and trap the prisoner in here. Finally, we have the Kingstone. This one is my personal favorite. Its design is amazing, and it's the first noble prison to not accept visitors. But this prison doesn't only have the use of Block 36 in common with the Pyramid, they're also escapable in similar ways. We now have our two finalists, Erebus Abyss and Gaius Vault. The Observer mess against the Chunk Bands. After all I've said, they might seem tied, but when you include a new element that we ignored all this time, there is a clear winner. And the Pearl Stasis Chambers. It was here, hiding in our list, waiting to be crossed off. It seemed pretty easy to fix at first. When the player dies, their pearls do too. But what if the pearls didn't know they died? If an ender pearl is in an unloaded chunk, then it will not be disabled at the player's death. This allows for the lamest, yet most effective way to escape. To execute it, throw a pearl in a bubble column far away. Then, when you're imprisoned, ask for a friend to go activate the pearl. No prison has managed to fix this problem, except for one of our two finalists. Here is a hint. Pearls don't work between dimensions. You guessed it, Erebus Abyss is our grand winner. This prison and its builder Jensen are the current best when it comes to micro prisons, at least in my humble opinion, and if no one was hiding in the end. But the story doesn't end here. A rivalry was born on the 19th of May 2021, with Jensen being an anti chunk ban and clowning on Gaia's vault with their own weapons. Since Sven is ready to take his revenge, and probably has some hidden plans. You know what would be funny? Uh, his, his prison that he's always teasing is called Obsidian Pen Penetrary, right? If he releases that, I will try to escape this and I will show him that it is also escapable. And I will also pop a, a chunk band on top of his prison and ban his prison and all the guards. Yeah. I don't care, That's I'm gonna do that. <laughs> what you gonna I do? I just it. made your prison useless. <laughs> that is how things are today, but this prison war is far from done. There is still a lot to be discovered. The Minecraft community has already proven several times how dedicated they can be. I wouldn't be surprised if Erebus Abyss has been escaped by the time I upload this video. That is it for now. This video took me weeks to do, so do what you gotta do. It has been Yatsu, have a good one. Oh, Yatsu is here. Shout out to Yatsu, pretty awesome guy. I know you're smiling right now. <laughs>